Okay, so welcome. My name's Karen Gilmore and I'm an artist from St. Ives. Today we are going to be doing a, an acrylic painting of St. Ives Harbour, which is where I live. This is my reference photo, which I took just um, last year, actually, um, of the harbour. So uh, that's what I'm going to be painting onto this canvas. So this is actually already framed up because um, it's an old canvas that I'm reusing. Um, and this is a board. Um, I prime my canvases with cadmium red. We're going to be painting acrylic um, onto, onto the board today. So we shall start. I'm going to uh, chat and natter as we go through it. And hopefully I have a house of many dogs. There's like seven dogs here. So they all start barking. I will uh, just stop the, the video briefly so that you don't all get deafened. <clears throat> what I'm going to do today is I'm not actually going to do any pre-drawing. I'm just going to paint straight onto the canvas. Um, as it's an acrylic, I'm just deciding um, whereabouts my horizon line is going to be. And it's going to kind of come across here. So we're going to be up this top bit, that's going to be the sky, then we're going to have the pier coming out, Smeaton's Pier, and then we've got Westcott's Quay coming out. The main bit that really attracted me to this is the water, so the water is going to be a primary focus, light source is going to be here, um, and I love the way the light sun comes down onto the water there. So we shall start. Um, being acrylic, obviously the paint itself is going to dry a couple of shades darker than I'm going to put it on. So um, I'm going to work with quite a limited palette on this. Um, I want to show you guys um, how to do a few bits and pieces. Um, I'm using De La Rowney System 3 acrylics and also um a few of the Kryler, the artist quality um paints which are slightly better quality should we say um depends on what flow you like okay so acrylics dry a couple of shades darker and we work from the darker shades to the lighter shades um i'm actually going to put in sky and the baseline C first of all so that I can get an in, uninterrupted flow in, into the into the back of it. I'm going to be using a big flat Winder & Newton number 24 brush this one which is uh, quite well used um, to start off with. So we are going to do mix up a little bit of colour here. I'm just going to wet the brush because that's the way I like it. And I'm going to use um, quite a palish blue. I want the sky to be quite light because I don't want the sky to be the overwhelming thing that people are going to look at straight away. So I have this nice pale powder blue colour. Um, at the bottom there I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre, just a little band of it and we're just going to paint that so it blends up into the sky. The bits on the sideboard I'm going to wipe off when I finish this sky. And we're going to put a bit more powder blue. I use like a spray bottle. This one to keep my palette wet. And I'm using a stay wet palette. Um, so I don't waste paint basically. Um, I quite like them. They work by osmosis and uh, it just keeps the acrylic um, 
a little bit lasting a little bit longer because uh, this paint even though it's very forgiving it dries so quick this is a little bit of an awkward angle for me to be honest but I'm doing it so that it films pretty good um, with my acrylics I tend to paint them up on an easel so I don't have this light bouncing off because to be honest I can't hugely tell what I'm getting the good coverage that I want to get with this I just want to cover up the reason that I use cad red underneath is because I really like where it comes through paint a little bit it's um it just warms up my colors a little bit I'm kind of predisposed to paint um, a little bit um, a little bit dark and a bit gloomy apparently but you know that's kind of what I like so I'm just going to cross brush this a little bit now because I don't want it to be that really huge straight line I'm going to put a little bit more light blue up there and I'm not going to do the sky in the Disney blue it is on reference because I want it to be a bit more neutralized Can you see that where that red comes through? I'm also just going to put a little bit of titanium white onto the top of this so we keep this nice and light. Here we are. Just want to make sure my brush marks are nice and smooth on this. There. Because I don't really want brush marks to be hugely evident. I'm going to put a little bit more yellow through. A little bit more um, yellow ochre. There we are. Lovely. We've got a nice smooth transition. There. I just didn't want it to be a solid line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in reverse of this. Down through the ocean. I'm ignoring the fact that the pier is there. because that can just go on the top and normally I work like I said you can work dark to light but I just want to show you this way of doing it and we'll do it the uh, other way around on a different painting okay so there we go like that and then we transition into that lovely powder blue that we get as we go up so the sea reflects the sky, but it's a little bit darker. But as I would like to keep this painting nice and warm, I'm going to light the sun on here. Like I said, it's a painting. So you want to get that feel of movement. There's a few little dry bits of paint on this actually that you might be seeing. It's fine, I'll let this through. Okay, so the sea is going darker now, so I'm going to start to introduce a bit of like a thalo turquoise because obviously we haven't just got a reflection, we've also got the colour of the sand underneath, the things that are on the, the ocean, on the sea. Um, like I said, the sand underneath, it's going to be changing the colour of the water. We've got reflections now on the inside, which are coming from buildings overlooking the harbour. So all of those things make an impact on what you're painting. So all of these are mixing in 
the lightest lights there and then it goes darker outwards okay <clears throat> I'm not one to stick to hard and fast rules when I'm painting so I won't always go oh you have to paint dark to light with um, oils and acrylics and um, light to dark with watercolours personally I think you do what what works and what you what you actually like doing and rules are there to be broken so hey hey so when I'm looking at the values by squinting at my picture I have darker down here in the very front so I'm going to put a few darker colours on there we can always work back work back light afterwards what you have more issues with with acrylic if you're doing it alla prima all in one go is this stuff dries so quick so be prepared for that so i would like some nice big um, directional lines on the water here put those in there we go like that Right there. So I'm going to put some of the dark bits of the pier in. I'm going to keep up with this big brush at the moment and I'm going to use some raw sienna, a little bit of purple and a bit of uh, French ultramarine blue to make a nice dark colour. So I'm just going to key in where my darker bits are. So we've got a small bit of Smeaton's Pier over there. And then we've got the bigger bit of Westcott's key here, which comes kind of to about halfway. So we're going to whack that in there. Whack it in. There you go. Put that in there. <coughs> and this is just our first uh, coating on this one. Okay. So this is kind of, it's almost like me drawing. Um, keep this nice big brush, there we go. And then we've got the reflections comes down slightly into the water there. So we'll put a little bit of that in. A minute. I'm gonna put some proper dark darks on there too. So I'm just darkening that up with a bit of Mars Black. Don't forget, this is going to dry darker. So let's start off a bit. Oh my god, I always hate my paint to start off with. Now we've got these little boats down to the left hand side, which are underneath the pier. I'm going to use a smaller brush in a minute and just stick in the other pier. So I want to put Smeaton's pier in in the same kind of values at the moment okay so remember that's burnt sienna french ultramarine and a wee bit of purple oh, i'm not sure which purple i've got in there to be honest at the moment so i'm going to line like i said we get a barky barky going on there's a gap between the two piers and I'm going to put, where am I going to put some eaters pier? It's going to be further up there. So I'm going to put that there. And we're going to come across. Like that. And then I'm going to draw down from that. That's the end of it. And then we have the bit there. I'm going to draw this some eaters pier. Without ever even looking at it, to be honest. I've done it so many times. So you have to just be a little bit careful with the pressure that you're putting on your brush there. And then we have 
lighthouse going up, up and away. And I'm going to put that in now, like I said, in the same values because I want it to all be at one. Now, even now, though we know the lighthouse is white, that's not what I'm seeing because I'm seeing the lighthouse exactly the same tones as I'm seeing the pier here, the pier here. Um, <clears throat> so it's really important to paint what you see, not what you know, especially when it's something you know really well. There's some bits and pieces there, I love that go on. Hopefully it's making a little bit of shape now. We can get a little bit of an idea of what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So, so let me sort out that line there because that's a bit rubbish. This is what I'm saying about if you push down on the brush, you get a bit of a fake line almost. Um, and there's these little white hut things over here which raises that line up a little bit so as long as we've got this stuff in that we need there for now that will do the job um, try and avoid going too tiny a brush too soon because what you start doing then is faffing and your faff faffing ruins your painting so Karen stop faffing Okay, so the top, see, what am I, what am I doing? I'm starting to faff. Okay, so I'm going to put in a little bit of what we call furniture. And that's all the little bits. So I'm taking paint from the existing stuff that's here. Now, in my painting there's a car there. I don't really want a car on the pier. But what I'm going to do is put a person there. Just lean in on the um, railings looking in because you know this is what you get get people on these you never used to have railings when we were a kid you just like told don't fall into the harbour but now um, obviously you have to have health and safety for everything so I'm just going to put a bit dark on the bottom here a bit darker there you go um, I'm trying to work this not as dark as I generally would because you know I'm quite keen on going in way darker than I probably should um, so anyway I'm gonna put a little boat here and these are like these little rib boats that you can um, zodiacs you can go out and have a little trip around the harbour um, great fun get a different view of the town there's one there there's one that goes across here so I'm not drawing a boat I'm just drawing the shape I see so it's just like an almost an identifiable shape there you go that's it um, there's a couple over here against the key and um, this brush is now too big for purpose so I drop that in the water before I ruin it like the rest of my brushes um, I'm going to take a little bit of this like I said, the paint from down here. Um, while this is still wet, I want to do the little bits and pieces that I need to put up there. Little bits of pier furniture. Oh, there we go. And there's always little weird things on the key, don't you know? Uh, there's little lights and stuff that um, go all the way along it. A little bit too tall considering the size I've made the lighthouse to be fair, but hey hey. Right, and there's a little sm small one there, like that, and then bits and pieces there. Um, like we were doing it here, see I love the way that comes through and the red now shows. Down here, I'm going to scrape a little bit off <coughs> with my palette knife. To have that as the steps. Um, we're going to go along here and we're going to do a few more bits of our pier furniture. There. Go along there. 
and then we have the back wall so I'm gonna put a bit more darker color into this making sure my palette's still nice and wet and it is wonderful I'm gonna put the back wall on there so it just is slightly higher I'm having this so it's not too dark because I want this to be kind of a little bit softer there perfect and then from this I'm going to take some bits from down here and we're going to do a little bit more of the furniture okay there's one there there's another one along here and there's all sorts of things along here I don't know what these things are to be honest but you know Okay, and then we have ladders going down here, which go to the boats, and we can also scrape off a little bit of that. So, I'm, this is why I really like the undercolour, because that undercolour gives so much to your painting. So along here, there's little steps that go down. Um, I don't want them to be quite that evident. So I'm just going to give a little slight highlights to that. Just want a few bits here. Ooh, I've got some reference right there. There are a few bits that are a little bit darker on this one because, um, you know, this is against the sunlight here a little bit more. There, and we've got the uh, the bits there. Yeah, stacked up bits of fishing gear. Okay, right. So that gives us a rough idea. I might even make the lighthouse a little bit taller here. And a little bit more um, because it's kind of like an important bit of the picture and it just felt a bit lost okay so these boats and things like that here they've got little bits and pieces going on like bits of stuff on them yeah, it doesn't have to be hugely like um, ooh, got one of the dog's hairs on there. Bit of uh, DNA for future reference. Uh, just put a bit of dark there. Mark that in. Um, and a bit of dark along here. So against the pier, what we quite often have is there's you know a few boats moored up. So we can put in, actually there isn't any here I don't think this time, that's a vehicle there, the bottom of the um, lighthouse there, it's very dark, okay, okay, that will be for that bit, stop fucking here again. This is the, um, the back bit of the water here now, so there's a little boat out yonder and that's going to be slightly paler, so I'm just going to make sure that I'm using the same value as that of the what sort of boat that is, it's just a little fishing boat I think. Going that way. Um, I don't know what that is there. There's something in the water there. I think it's just the like This is going to be a bit darker because it's a bit closer. So I'll check on. I'm always squinting to check on these values to make sure that these are always going to be where I want them to be. 
I'm just going to address them. I can't address it yet because the sky is still wet. I'm waiting for the sky to dry before I deal with the sun um, in the sky. So that's going to be like my latter things to do because that's like really light. And I'll do that when the background colour is there. It's done. So what they want to do is I would like to find a suitable brush somewhere in here. Acrylic completely ruins all your brushes. So I don't buy particularly expensive brushes for acrylic because all I do is ruin them. So this little gem here has got a dark bit there. So I don't want this to look too artificial, I want it to all blend in. So I'm going to sort of address it as if I was doing like plein air almost, so I want to get it quite quickly in, um, which is why I like doing plein air, because it stops my faffing habit. Okay, there we go. Um, the little bit down the bottom is just where I'm anchoring the boats down to the water. Do, 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 do. Um, I'm getting the dark in and then I can readdress that afterwards. And if I need to lighten it, I can lighten that down with um, some nice turquoises if need be. I might need to. So. See, some of these things, I don't know what that is on the boat but I can see it's just something that's there so you put in the suggestions of what's there and then you know your brain fills in the gap um, as long as you've got the key points that's what's important over there a little bit like that and uh, always do a few that way brush strokes on the water because it makes it just stops loads of you've got to be really careful you just don't get loads and loads of horizontal lines when you come to water because um, that's what we tend to do we think oh the water goes this way um, but the reflections actually come this way, so you know, whack them in there that way. That boat over there has got no reflections at all or nothing, so it's almost like it's just floating. Um, I'm gonna just lightly dry brush so it looks like it's at least coming from somewhere. <laughs> okay, so over here now. We have some more boats, so I'm going to put the outline of them because they're quite light boats, but they're sitting on the water, so obviously they've got the um, they are anchored here. And again, trying to stop myself faffing too soon. Don't faff too soon. It's darker. This is probably where it's darkest. To be fair, from the bottom of the, the West Coast Key down past these boats. That's where my darky dark bits are. Oh my God, I've still got some of that colour mixed up so I'm not using um, neat black. I don't want it to look too harsh. There's little bits of paint and stuff you know that tuck in. I'm just leaving them there because personally I think it will adds to its uh, adds to the texture it makes it look quite nice myself. Um, anything different let me know in the comments um, but I quite like a bit of texture in my uh, in my oils and my acrylics oils any any stage give you a little bit more breathing time um, acrylics yeah not so much though so I'm just putting a few darker factors darker values on the top of this 
because this um, Westcott's key here is Clinton. See that little bit there? I quite like that. I'm going to leave that there. Um, Westcott's key here is closer to us than Smeaton's Pier over there. So this one needs to have the darker, darker shades. And down here, it's very dark. And under this boat, yeah, dark, dark. So I'm going to put a few little darker values into the into the water here because again it's all about suggestions all about suggestions um, I actually find it quite easy probably um, no offense like shut up Karen I'm just paid um, to talk while I work I don't have a problem with it myself generally but hey okay. <coughs> many people fall out with themselves do they so I'm just gonna put a couple of boats over here against the pier whether they're there or not because I just don't want that line looking that straight do you know what I mean it's just a little bit Not all the boats are huge and effusive, somewhere you get the little punts there. Tenders, I think they're officially called. Um, so people can get to their <coughs> on and off their boats when the tide's changed. There we go. Right, so I'm going to leave that one for a second. Um, I'll give you a few minutes of break from my constant jibber jabber. I'm going to clean my brushes and I'm just going to let that dry.